In this video, I'm going to show you how to do orthographic projection. So orthographic projection is just the system we use to take 3D objects and put them on two-dimensional paper. Now, CAD systems do this for us automatically, but it's important to understand how it works because a CAD system will let you do anything, right? You can put views in the wrong place. You can do a lot of confusing stuff. You got to know how the actual system works, which I'll show you right now. So the basis of the system are six principal views, front, right, left, top, bottom, and rear. We almost never use all six views. There's three regular views that are often used. Often two views is enough, but three regular views are the front, top, and right. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So let's move to the paper here. We've got a block with a hole in it and a little cut on this side. We're gonna make a front, a right view here and a top view here from this front view. Now, the only supplies I have are a mechanical pencil and a piece of cardstock. Now, you can use a ruler if you want, you can use a fancy pencil, but this is enough for what I'm gonna do today. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is do the right view. Now, we've got all the information we need minus this distance, right? This is gonna be the depth of the part. We're just gonna guess, right? Sometimes you just have to guess with this stuff, especially if you're just sketching, right? Another thing is drawings, you, you don't never measure from a drawing. I mean, they're too scale, but it's not super critical that it's exact because you're not gonna be measuring from it, right? So there can be little changes here and there. On a CAD drawing, you often have views that are in different scales because again, you shouldn't measure a drawing with a ruler. Now, what we're gonna do is create projectors. These are just thin lines. I'm gonna line my cardstock up with the bottom of the part and I'm just gonna draw a nice thin line all the way to the edge of the paper. Now, it should be parallel to the bottom of the part here and then perpendicular to the side of the part. So I'm gonna do the same thing up here. I'll keep my cardstock on the opposite side so that I can see that it's lined up with the paper. And I'll draw another projection line. Now, I need a projection line coming from this little feature right here, because that's gonna show up on the right view. And I'll do another one from this feature, okay? So that's all the projection lines we need for the right view. Now, we've gotta decide where we want the views. So if you put the right view really close to the front view, the top view is gonna to have to be really close to the front view, and I'll show you, you'll see why in a second. So I'm just gonna pick a spot on the drawing for this edge of the part. I'll pick right here, and I'll try to draw a thicker line, okay? So that's gonna represent this plane right here of the part. We're looking at it from this direction. Now, I've gotta guess the depth of the part. So we're looking for the distance from this plane to the plane on the back of the part. It's not super critical here. I'm just gonna guess right there. Now, we can go in this line, this one, this one, and this one. All four are gonna become visible lines, so they should be darker. So I'll go in and just use my straight edge here, try to darken them up a little bit. So that's the complete uh, right view of the part. Now, you might say, hey, where are the hidden lines for this circle right here? Well, the hidden lines would essentially be on top of these visible lines, and visible lines have precedence over hidden lines on a, on a drawing view, okay? So now, we gotta do this top view. So we're gonna do the projectors just like we did before. So I'll do projectors coming from this side of the part, going straight up. And there'll be one projector coming from the bottom of this little cut. Okay. So they didn't turn out perfect, but they'll be good enough for what we need. Now, 
we've got to do make what's known as a miter line. A miter line is 45 degrees between the views. So again, a protractor would be great, but I'm just going to guess. All right? That looks like 45 degrees to me, right? So what the miter line does, we're going to come from this visible line up here with the projector and then take a left turn and go this way with the projector. So let me show you what that does. So we come up here with the projector and I'll go ahead and do this side as well. Now we take a 90 degree turn and I'm just looking for the intersection of the miter line and the projector I just made. I'll do the same thing up here. Now this rectangle here is the outline of the front view. So I can just darken up this line. Same thing over here. Now this projector that came off of this surface right here is going to be a hidden line in the top view. So I'll do equally spaced lines. Now these should be thin lines, not thick lines. Uh, you could erase it and do it over again over the projector. This will be good enough for what we're doing here. Now the top view can have hidden lines for the circle. So the way we do that, I'm going to go to the edge of the circle and I'm just visually checking with my paper. Again, a, project, a protractor will let you do this at a perfect 90 degree angle. I want my paper to be 90 degrees with any of these lines and then tangent to the side of that circle. So with the paper here, I can skip the projector and just do a hidden line. And I'll do the same thing on the other side of the circle. All right, and I'll do the same thing for the center of the circle, and I can use the center mark to line it up. And I'll draw a center line for the center of that circle between the hidden lines. Okay, now all the, the views are done. All we got to do is go through and erase the projectors. Now, depending on what you're doing, you might not even have to do this if you just needed a, a nice sketch. Again, an eraser shield or other drafting tools is great for this, but if you don't have any a regular pencil and you know index card or some card stock works fine. Now the next thing I want to say about orthographic projection is that it does matter where these views are, right? The right view comes from the front view in a very specific way. If you're using a CAD program and you put this right view to the left of the part, people are going to get really, really confused. And a CAD program will do that you know, with no problem. It doesn't care. It can put the view wherever. But it's supposed to be right here. These views move together as well. So they're going to, you know, if one is two inches away from the part, the other one is going to be two inches away from the part. Sometimes CAD programs can break those rules. Whereas with this true projection, you know, they're, they're kind of scaled together. Uh, another thing, when a view is in true projection, it should be the same scale. Now, removed views are a technique for, to change scales and move things out of the way, but with the removed view, you should have view uh, viewing plane to let people know where the view comes from. That's different from just taking this view and putting it on the left side of the part. That's, you know, not good as I've tried to illustrate here. Okay, so that's the basics of orthographic projection. This one I wanted to get through in this video. Uh, I've got a couple more of these. Maybe I'll do in a, another video uh, sometime soon. And I'll try to put this PDF on uh, in the description as a PDF so you can download it if you want to give it a shot. Okay, so uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment uh, if you want to see more of these types of videos coming soon.